everyone, it's Madison from SCG. Thanks so much for joining me today. I'm super psyched to share some tips and tricks on the Diletta Mio. Uh, the Diletta line, we're really excited about at SCG. It's proprietary, so you're only gonna find it here on our website. Uh, they're built in Italy by hand. Certainly striking to look at, and I've been really enjoying getting to know the Diletta Mio. Uh, so let's get into the tips and tricks. The first thing that I want to call out is that this machine has a water reservoir that's fed here on the side. So when you're getting it set up, you're going to want to make sure that there, the two water lines here are submerged in that water reservoir. Now there are two water lines because <laughs> there is a dedicated single boiler for the group head and a thermo block for the steam wand and they have their own separate circuits, their own separate water pumps. So make sure that both of those water lines are submerged. Next thing that I wanna uh, talk about is when you turn on your machine, you're going to notice this uh, 1ST or first here on the PID. This means that the uh, boiler just needs to be flushed or filled with water. And it's uh, pretty easy to do. I'll, I'll show you, all you have to do is press this brew button let it run for about 60 seconds. So let's give it a shot. As you can see, you can follow along with the shot timer here. It's counting up for us, which is nice. All right, let's stop it at 60. Now it flashed a bit and let us know that it's, it's done filling and you can watch here the temperature climb up. So should hit that 200 or, or 202 mark eventually when it's uh, good and, and ready to use. But all right, another thing that I want to call out is that because the machine has two different circuits and water pumps for brewing and steaming, it means that you can simultaneously brew and steam, uh, which is great. One thing to keep in mind though, is that it does draw a little bit extra power when you're simultaneously brewing and steaming. It's about 1,650 watts. Uh, we haven't noticed any real issues, say if you had your grinder and your espresso machine on the same outlet, hasn't been too big a problem for us. But if you're using an appliance like a hot water kettle or you wanted to start popping popcorn at the same time that you're brewing and steaming, you may uh, end up tripping your breaker. So it's just something to keep in mind. Um, you know, there is an, another option to consider too. If you're not going to be steaming, you can even power the steam circuit off here. Uh, so you can see I've got my, this is uh, this the steam circuit is powered on. I could just switch it off if I wanted to. If you wanted to save a little bit of extra power, uh, you can go ahead and do that. Now, uh, before I get too much further, let's go ahead and brew a shot. Uh, we're just about up to temp here, so I'll start to go. One thing I want to mention about the portafilter is that they are the like, kind of traditional Italian baskets, so the dosage here is going to be a little bit smaller than 18. I've been putting around 14 to 15 in my double basket. Um, the single basket I'd put around seven grams in would be good. using the Vario Plus, which I've also been really enjoying uh, testing and using. Uh, for those wondering, I am using the, the two 
on the macro setting and Q on micro here. So it's been a, a pretty good setting for me, thanks to Baratza for the uh, starting point. It's 14.4. I'm just going to put a tiny, tiny bit more in there for, for good luck. And that's 15.9 grams, so it, it'll be a little bit larger than the testing that I've done, but we'll see how it comes out. Another thing that I wanted to mention is that it takes this machine about 15 minutes to be fully heat saturated. Um, that's, you know, the inner workings of the machine, but also the group head as well. So for best results, give it a good 15 minutes. Uh, but if you're in a hurry, this machine will be ready to brew in about six and a half minutes from cold. What I would make sure that you do, though, is just run a blank shot through the portafilter. That way the group head gets good and, and heated up. So that's one thing I really like about it. It's fast. It's a very fast machine. All right, I'm back. I got my shot glass. So let's go ahead and brew a shot. I really like that this machine has a uh, pressure gauge here on the front. You can see I'm up, up to around 10, grand, uh, 10 bars, so a little more than that 9 bar range, but I think that's going to be okay. All right, 30 seconds in. Give it a taste. Tastes really good. I like it. It's good and balanced for sure. Strong, good body. Very tasty. The last thing that I want to, or one of the last things I wanted to mention is here is the shot time. You know, after that shot ended, you might have noticed that that temperature dipped down to like the high 170s or low 180s in Fahrenheit. And that's because the temperature sensor temperature sensor in this machine is measuring what's happening in the boiler. So you're not going to just see whatever your set temperature was. Um, you're really seeing what temperature the boiler is. So make sure that it climbs back up to that temperature that you want it to be before you brew your next shot. The last tip that I wanted to share today is that this machine features a passive uh, cup warming system. And really, it's being driven by this boiler that's kind of right above the group head. So be careful. It's hot up here uh, for sure. Um, it, it definitely gets hot. Um, what I would recommend is if you have your cups up here to get warm, serve from the front serve for your guest and then move your cups up to the forward and just make sure that you serve from the top. But that is it today. I hope you really enjoyed watching this video. Uh, please like and subscribe if you did, and we'll see you next time. Okay.